Happy Wednesday! It is Wednesday, and you know what that means? It's Flower School Live! Hi, I'm Teacher Michelle, and in the classroom is Leanne today. So I have Parker with me, and Marisa, and then out in Cyberland, Carolyn, Caledonia, Susie, David. We got the whole team working today, just not all in the same place. It is really nice to be back here, especially the day after International Women's Day. Did you all celebrate that yesterday? Did you guys get a chance to either give a special woman in your life flowers? And that includes you. You can buy flowers for yourself. Heck, that's the best kind, because then you know you get what you like. We did a fun little flower bombing, flower activity yesterday with the class. There was a new women's shelter opening in Portland and we took the students down there to see that, visit with some of the ladies and hand out some of the locally grown product. Um, one of the local florists did an installation and if you check out Tulip People or just our Flower School feed, regular um, Facebook feed, you'll see some of the images from that yesterday. So that was pretty fun. Well, that was yesterday. Today, today is Wednesday, which I've said, and you know what we're gonna talk about? It's a four letter word. So if you have small children, please, please cover their ears. It's prom. We're talking about prom today. Prom is just around the corner and much like weddings have promised to be some of the busiest and biggest and mostest, and I know that's not a word, it's it, weddings this year are just gonna be extra. And I'm pretty sure prom is gonna be extra as well. Cause for some people, for some schools, it'll have been two years since they actually held a legitimate in-person prom. So I'm pretty sure that if I were 15, 16, 15 to 18, and that was my world right now, I'd be super excited that we were having prom. So I'm gonna pull some materials. Make sure if you're a tulip, put your tulip in there so that we know that you are either a student, a graduate, or a member of the Flower Lovers Club. If you wanna watch us sideways, you're gonna get a larger picture and the comments will roll over the screen. If that bothers you, just swipe to the side. I'm not sure if it's left or right. And I'm not on Tinder, so I'm not even gonna try and tell you which way that goes. <laughs> but swipe the comments off to the side and then you have an uninterrupted picture. While I grab materials, do we have anybody that's already said howdy today? We do, over here on Facebook, and they're still <coughs> coming in. Uh -huh. So, so far, uh, we have Shree, Jim, Dana, Lori, uh, we have two Robins with us. Nice. Roxy, David, Carl, Andrea, Margaret, Cindy, Bethany, Rick, Dana, Pamela, Kim, and Drake is with us, um, who's so excited because he has some dances this weekend. Oh, Drake, honey, Drake. Drake, I got something for you later, and you'll know when you see. Um, that's all I'm going to say, but you'll know it's for you. <laughs> uh, well, good. Sounds like a good turnout. How about over on YouTube, Parker? Anybody that we need to say? Do we have any newbies? Has anybody said that they're a first-timer? We would love, love for you to chime in and let us know if you're a first timer because the Tulip people are super friendly and supportive and we want to say hi. Well, we, they're slow to wake up over here on YouTube. So far I have Avery, Heidi, Lizia, Shelly, and Debbie, and that's it. Okay. All right. Well, the YouTube crowd, they like to chat amongst themselves anyhow. That's right, Carolyn? It's mostly just making sure that everybody's playing well with others. And hi, Susie. Hope everything is going well in your world. Looking forward to seeing you later. <laughs> we always laugh when we say, see you guys at live. It's like, I can't see any of you. <laughs> I can barely see Parker and Marisa because I have lights on and I can't see them at all. I just know I heard these voices. So, mm -hmm. so like I said, we're talking prom today. And for some people, it's a love-hate relationship. They love prom. They love the excitement of the kids they like the the opportunity to maybe play with different materials or different mechanics um for other people they absolutely hate prom they don't they don't like to deal with all the extra fussy bits and um as i've heard them referred to on occasion brides in training 
<laughs> so, you know, it, again, it's a love-hate relationship. Um, it is coming up quickly. And depending on where you are in the world, that could determine when the prom season starts for you. Um, so as I was looking at prom and prom for this year, I was looking at kind of some of the comments in the different chat groups and the, the um, different associations that I belong to, looking at trends, looking at um, just, just what's happening this year. And the one, well, I won't say the one, I'm gonna talk about all the key ones, at least that I was finding. Probably the most important for y'all is prepare now. I know we just started March. Today's what, the 9th? And um, what I'm hearing and seeing is that the girls are coming in earlier to reserve and plan for their prom. And they're also ordering things for their partner, whoever's attending the dance with them, because they're feeling more and more like it's important that they both coordinate. Now, back in my day, back in my day, we told the partner, the guy, what we were wearing, what color the dress was, and sometimes a friend would help out, but that wasn't always reliable. And typically the boy or the boy's mother would go and order the flowers. And he kind of hoped that when you got there that you looked like you belonged together. Um, but now what I'm seeing is that they're, the girls are taking the reins by the horn, and bull by the horns, horse by the reins, too many animals. And they are in fact ordering what they want to coordinate with their dress. And then they are also picking out what their partner is wearing. That way there's no confusion, no concern that it doesn't match, that it doesn't coordinate, and that your version of burgundy isn't a different version of burgundy and looks like plum instead. So I, I found that to be very interesting. Some of it was fear, a little fear, ordering fear buying, knowing that they wanted what they wanted and they thought ordering early would get that for them. So if you haven't already put some thought into your bling bar or your prom options, I would strongly encourage you to do so because sooner rather than later is definitely gonna benefit you in the long run. Um, the thing I noticed also was looking at the different uh, gown providers and dress providers that we have so, so many shades of blue um, from a dark navy black blue to a very soft, like an ice blue or a pale, pale aquamarine blue, just these beautiful, beautiful shades. So when I was pulling flowers for today's live, I tried to stick with colors that looked good with any range of blue. So for example, I have a, a, a royal blue here, basically. I don't know that they've given it a name. They call it wired taffeta ribbon. <laughs> Thanks for that, figured that one out on my own. <laughs> but I would say it's more of a royal blue. But blue, even in a brighter hue such as this, is pretty neutral. I mean, here's, here's a peachy pink hypericum. Here's a lavender pinkish toned um, miniature carnation. Here is a blush pink rose. Okay, I know I'm on one side of the color wheel. Stay with me, I'm gonna get on the warm side. Here is a coral or pale orange. Look at that, is that, mm, mm, that's beautiful. Pale orange there. Um, conversely, you can go to bolder tones that look great with blue. Hey, that's a party. That's great. Hey. Hey, that's a party. <laughs> uh, orange. Of course, I talked about the peach, but orange looks fantastic with blue. And then, of course, yellow. And a nod to our European friends who are having some issues right now. So, uh, blue is really a neutral it has come into its own in that category. So I have kind of the muted uh, tones to this side, I'll say pastels. And over here I have a more vibrant collection of flowers, but they all play really well with that blue, regardless of the, the depth of the color in it. Um, 
as I was looking at the dresses and so forth, um, I was looking at the different styles of dresses. If you can call some of those that. <laughs> some were a little, a little more than you might expect or a little less than you might expect. Uh -huh. But um, the thing that was sticking out to me uh, as an 80s baby was that 80s trends were running pretty hot in those dress styles. It's like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was in when I was, yeah, no, but true. Um, another thing that I was noticing is the, um, the early 2000s look, which is retro, right? Because we're in 2022. So in 2002, that was 20 years ago. So for the, the youngsters today, that's a retro look, as was the 80s look, which would be my world. Um, but I thought that was very, very interesting. What, what are you seeing as trends in your area? Are you noticing girls or boys coming in to pick out prom flowers yet or asking about when your prom materials might be available? Go ahead and type that in and, and let us know because I'd be curious to hear what's happening in your section of the world. And speaking of your section of the world, do we have anybody popping in and saying hi yet? Um, I do have Deb who is new to the Flower Lovers Club. Uh -huh. And uh, Kathleen, um, who is a FBI graduate, who usually is working on Wednesdays, but not today. Oh, well, good. Glad you're joining us. That's awesome. And it looks like here so far, I don't have any, um, too many answers coming in. However, the couple that I, oh, the three. Wow, I had no idea, really. <laughs> okay. no, this is, no, this is really cool. So do tell. Three people so far have said the same thing as far as the trends. Okay. Yeah. 80s dresses, fluffy and huge. Um, down in southern Idaho, same thing. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea. Yeah, yeah, oh. absolutely. I know. Get on there so and wait, check some of that out. So basically, when you go to the thrift store, those dresses that kind of sale, yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, so the, those of you that are not John Houston movie fans, rent Pretty in Pink. Just go there oh, and yes. yeah, right, and you'll be fine. So I've pulled a selection of flowers and I'm going to do just a little hand tie bouquet because one of the interesting trends that we've been noticing is that bouquets are coming into their own for prom. Not just wearables, not just um, corsages and boutonnieres and things like that, but also things to carry. And I think that's fantastic. Heck, what's not to love if you're going to have uh, floral accessories, there's no such thing as too many, right? So um, the scale is somewhat going to be dependent on the girl, but what I'm seeing as I'm talking to my peers across the country, because I called some peeps and said, hey, so tell me, what's, what are you seeing in your world? What's going on? Um, they were talking about bridesmaid sized bouquets as kind of the, I won't say the norm, but definitely as something that they were seeing in their marketplaces. And um, I thought, okay, well, I'm just gonna do a little, a little something, something that's kind of in these peach pink hues. And then just to put a little of that blue in there, I have some of these gorgeous light blue delphiniums um, just to give it a little more depth, I guess I would say. And <clears throat> the, the interesting thing about the hand tides, I thought, was that that's kind of a throwback, right? It's a throwback to the posy and going on a date and bringing flowers for your significant not yet significant maybe, but you're trying to get it that way. <laughs> so um, just doing an option where you might have a basic color palette available to people, maybe pinks, reds, and whites. Because I've talked about that a lot before with your prom bars, picking um, a, a set of base colors in base flowers and then letting your accessories go. But honestly, this year, having seen so, so much of that navy blue, and or not just navy, actually, any of those blue tones coming in, I feel like, you know, you could branch out into other things in your cooler, 
But if you're working with just some, some key colors, some basic colors, um, you could come up with some different bouquet options for those girls that might want something just a little different, want something a little more spectacular, a little showier. Uh, I was always the kid that wanted something different. I didn't want to have what everybody else had. I remember when I wanted my first car, or got my first car, it's like, oh, I know exactly what I want. And then I started seeing them everywhere. It's like, yeah, I don't want that now. Everybody has one. <laughs> What's up, Marissa? Uh, that rose that you have there, what variety is the name? What you is know, I believe it is Pink Mondile, and it is spectacular. Uh, we got these in mid last week, is that right? I think. Uh, they came on my, I don't remember. I want to say Tuesday or Wednesday. What's today? Today's, Today's Wednesday. Wednesday. I think we've had them in for a week. No. Haven't we? And they've been opening? I thought they had been. I think they were here on Monday. The, two days ago Monday? Yeah. Okay. I kind of, yeah. Time's kind you're, of you're I'm sorry, I stand corrected. We had just Mondial yeah. in last week yeah. that are about the size of my hand right now. Yes. Um, yes, the pink, you are correct. The pink Mondial came in earlier this week, yeah. And Michelle, have you ever seen Napoleon Dynamite? <sighs> Bye, Felicia. No, I haven't, but I do know lines from it. And I need to. <laughs> okay, so, you know, it's just funny because Ke Kelly um, quoted um, something from Napoleon Dynamite. And for uh -huh. those of you out there that haven't seen it, it's a, it's an eight, it's a spinoff of like an 80s movie. Yes. And um, Kelly says, quotes, I like your sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine it's related to a funky dress, so. <laughs> yeah, very big 80s very dress. Very big like 80s dress. dress. Nice. Very fun. <laughs> I know I need to see it, and I also needed to see Super Bad. Somebody said, but um, I I may be uh, past the expiration date on some of those for um, my age, but we'll see. Um, so the size I'm going for here is pretty much what you might find as a bridesmaid size. I'm I'm a petite five ten. <laughs> Uh, so for me, this would be a fine size. Now, Marisa would look like she's actually getting married because it would be much, much bigger with her holding this. But um, I just found it to be very, very interesting, the size of the bouquets that, that were being requested. Uh, anybody out there seeing that in their marketplace where you're finding people are requesting uh, bouquets Maybe it was at homecoming, and you're anticipating that to continue for this this season. I had over here. I had Shelley comment that she had seen kind of what you were talking about about uh, during the last homecoming about the uh, well. She said the girls coming in to order for everybody, mm -hmm. and also she said that earthy colors are big for her right now. Oh, really? Like so the muted? Yeah, no bright colors. A lot of earthy inquiries. Mm-hmm. Well, we've had bright tones. You know, I was talking in class the other day that we have in the floral trade, we have um, very much like in fashion, it's a pendulum swinging back and forth and, and we need to see differences in what we're, uh, what we're doing from year to year, season to season, because in the fashion world, of course, they're trying to sell things and they don't want to go from a bell bottom to just a wide leg. They've got to go from a bell bottom to a skinny jean. Otherwise, nobody knows you bought new clothes. And we're kind of seeing that same thing in floristry where um, we're going to something. Oh, that's a good leaf. There's no stem. Um, <laughs> whoopsie. We're seeing a greater pendulum swing on uh, from bold to, to muted, from muted to primary, from primary to pastel, so that there's a definite transition of trends and styles. <clears throat> so I'm just going to use a little bind wire to secure this together, and then I can take a peek at it and fluff up blossoms as needed. So did you put in loops of lily grass in there? I did. I just grabbed those and looped them over on themselves just for a little more movement. I didn't want the, the long extension that I might have with 
um, the full lily grass running wild and amok, <laughs> if you will, uh, but just having a little bit of extra movement in there with the curls of it. All right, get that tightened up. Michelle, Jessica has a great question over here on Facebook. Sure. Um, she wants to know um, if there are different types of corsages for prom. Oh my gosh, yes, so excellent question. There are, uh, let me just verbal vomit for a second. You could have a classic pin on, you could have a wrist corsage, you could have an over the shoulder corsage, and then in that wrist corsage category, you could have a myriad of mechanics. Um, it could be a metal cuff, it could be an elastic band, it could be... Um, bracelet could be a bracelet yeah so just lots and lots of options and i would say there is no clear winner in those um you know this bouquet coming of age and becoming more popular uh for proms let me get rid of a few of these stems it's a little a little overwhelming here um but that's an excellent segue in fact jessica thank you for asking because as fabulous as a bouquet is for prom you get it maybe there's a group of you that gathers for photography at your house or somebody's house and then you all pile into the limo or your cars or whatever conveyance you're taking to prom and Maybe you're headed to dinner first, and maybe you take your flowers in to dinner and then you forget them. I've seen that happen where you leave your bouquet and then you get to prom and you don't have any flowers. So I love the thought of the prom bouquet because I do think it is showier and I have seen some fantastic photos with um, the prom bouquets in them and they just look really amazing but I still think wearables are important. So, oh, and having said that, I have completely done this without the one flower that I really wanted in it. I got so excited by those dang ranunculus. I got squirreled. Uh, <laughs> hey, when that happens. Um, I had planned on including these gorgeous little mm. daisies in them because I think daisies are very sweet. I think they're, uh, they're youthful. There's a certain cheerfulness to them, and I'm not going to use the W word, uh, but they're, they're just a happy, happy little flower. So having a little, little hand tie like that, and then we're going to go to Fantasyland with me for just a second. Let me grab a, a vessel for that. So we're going to pretend pretend, pretend, pretend that I had remembered to put these Gerberas in because I had forgotten. And without them, it isn't going to work. So <laughs> hang tight for just a second. So as I tuck a few of those in to add a little more brightness, a little bit of, well, good, good spiral there, Michelle. They're not going in anywhere. All right. That's fine. A little bit more spring, if you will. Um, talking about the wearables, talking about the fact that once you have the bouquet, it's great, but you probably aren't gonna carry it out onto the dance floor with you, and you probably aren't going to remember it, maybe in the car, something like that. So if I have a wearable that goes with it, then I know not only do I have my flowers, but I also, as the floral designer, as the florist, have an ensemble that I can offer to my customers to say, hey, I love the idea, how about a prom bouquet? But then how about something to coordinate with that? So hold on. What about some kind of neck piece? Did y'all think I'd go a whole episode without wire or glue? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Who is this here, people? So how about a simple, I can find my tools, 
a simple um, necklace that could be an accompanying piece to the bouquet. And as I was looking at some of the designs uh, of gowns and dresses that the gals are selecting this year, I was seeing a lot of one strap or one shoulder, so maybe a spaghetti strap and then maybe a more dramatic sleeve. So back to the nice sleeves comment. Um, and I was seeing lots of cutouts, which is a throwback to that early 2000s look as well. Um, and rhinestones. Rhinestones were a huge, huge, huge embellishment. But all of the dresses had a very open neckline. I wasn't seeing a lot of boat necks or ballet necks that were coming straight across or a scoop. Everything's pretty <laughs> open and revealing, frankly. Uh, but I thought, okay, why not an ensemble that would pull together components of um, the bouquet that they carried and translate that into something that's a wearable. That way, if they do leave their bouquet at their table or they forget it in the limo or the restaurant, they don't show up at prom without any floral adornment at all. That would just be criminal, frankly, in my mind. So what I thought was just simple, simple, simple. So I have a ring blank and you could make this out of um, aluminum wire as well. We sell these ring blanks and they're very fast and very easy. They make it simple for your customer to pick the ring blank and then customize it with whatever materials they want. So with that in mind, Parker, do you want that little box up here? Would that be easier if I had that? Uh, sure. Okay, let me grab that. <laughs> Got to find the middle of the table here. There we go. That might look a little, work a little better. So what I was thinking is a simple ring with a Gerbera daisy. And you could do it with the ranunculus too, I suppose. I just thought the Gerberas were just so perky and happy. They just make me smile. Cut his little head off there. And then um, just a little bit of glue, a little schmear, a little dab of glue on the top of the ring blank. And let that sit up for a second, set up. And then, whoops, I need to make sure I've cut that level. Not, not very straight cut on the back of that. Hang tight for a second here. Let me adjust that. If I don't even up my cut, the flower head isn't going to sit flat on that uh, ring blank. And it'll look a little, little cockeyed. So then on that cut, that open wound, if you will, on the back of the Gerber Daisy, I'm going to put a little blob of glue and then I'm just going to let those sit for a second and start to cure. I got a little, little carried away with the glue on the back of the gerb. Maybe we'll, we'll edit some of that out. Um, so a ring, easy piece, nice add on sale to the to the bouquet, but then also maybe a necklace, just a simple, simple necklace. And what I have here is the Oasis aluminum wire. It's the 12 gauge in silver. It's very soft, very malleable. And I'm working with uh, jeweler's pliers. And this pair happens to have a cut, uh, a cutting tool in the middle of it. So I can kind of take a look at how much I want for the neck wire and cut some off. And then I'll quickly coil those ends just to make sure I don't hurt myself because we don't need to see me bleeding on <laughs> Facebook Live today. And give myself the start of a neck form. And I haven't really decided which way I'm going to do it yet, if it's gonna be an open neck form or a closed form. So we'll just, we'll just find out together, how's that? <laughs> so as I work through this, any questions out there? Anybody typing in any answers to my questions? Um, for me, I don't have, what questions did you ask? <laughs> Somebody's not paying attention to no, me. I mean, that's the thing. Like, the there was a few people that answered about the, the trends as far as the dresses, but no one yep. has been answering really. 
really anything else. Okay. However, Kim, um, her niece last year for her prom um, actually had lights in there, um, and it looked cool when it was really dark, and she had never seen that before. Where Where is your niece located? Where are you located? The, the lights were popular, because I have heard that before. Just curious if it was in the same place that I had heard of the lights and the bouquet. And then Lori um, had a question that maybe either you could answer, Michelle, or uh -huh. uh, keep it open to the tulips. Uh -huh. um, she's wanting to know um, if your clients want the bouquet mm -hmm. instead of a corsage, say, um, how do they hand them off to their clients? Good, good question. So if... And when you say hand them off to their clients. Like, you know how we take corsages and put them in like a box? Gotcha. Or in a face or wrap it. Gotcha, gotcha, paper. gotcha. Yeah. Um, I would say that's going to depend a little bit on you and how you package all of your stuff. You could make it as simple or as dramatic as you wanted. It could be um, a very inexpensive cylinder vase that comes from a store where they sell things for a dollar and a quarter now uh, that you would present to them so they're transporting it home um, if they're picking it up the day of you you know you could do the uh, a water source in the basic course we talk about different ways to add water to hand tied bouquets um, so something like that would be an option but I mean honestly you could make it as crazy or as simple as you wanted just make it fit within your brand, I guess is what I would say. Along those lines, how would you figure out how to price packages like this if you're doing multiple pieces together? Great question. So you're going to want to look at cost per each, factor the cost for the bouquets, and it may be a stem count that you come up with or a base flower with a choice of three additional items however you want to structure your pricing and you could either treat the ring and the necklace as an add-on package meaning they have to add both pieces to it and maybe they get that at a i won't say a discount but i'll say for a package price uh, that would be an option or you might choose to offer the ring and the necklace as a package as a, as just a one thing that they could um, they could do. If you've had basic and if you've had advanced, we talk about event flower pricing and we talk a little bit about pricing personal flowers, wear and carry flowers, and um, you would want to go with whatever pricing structure fits your business model. And you're like, well, that didn't tell me anything, Michelle. Well, yeah, kind of did, but. Um, I, I can't say I would charge $115 for this because what I pay for flowers in Portland, Oregon is going to be different than what you pay in Seattle, Washington and different in Topeka and Karen over in Idaho. She's going to be paying something different. So um, I can't really give you a number, but I can talk about different ways you could structure it. So with that little Gerbera daisy, I tacked him onto the top of that ring blank and then used some tinted preserved reindeer moss so it's very squishy it's parker's favorite it has a funky smell to it um in the green i also have white but i like the contrast with the green because it kind of blended in with the calyx that's underneath the the gerbera there um and that hid the extra glue hid my mechanics but now i have a fun very showy little ring to wear if i can get it off my finger now that'd be good i'm gonna tuck him up here for the moment and then as far as the necklace, what I did was just take a piece of the uh, 12 gauge aluminum wire, made a quick neck wire, and then took another length, coiled both ends, and then wrapped those two ends into spirals. So what I can do now is very much the same thing I had done. Hopefully I have another light colored one. Oh good, got a little carried away with those. I can come back with, um, two other Gerberas and make sure I've got them clipped off nice and straight and flat. And I can attach those to those little spirals that I made. Now, conversely, um, you could do just a single Gerbera, just a single Gerbera that matched what was on the ring. That would be quite adorable and perhaps a little more cost-effective for people too. Uh, 
But again, it's just kind of what appeals to you and your customer. And you're saying, well, Michelle, you're just showing us to, this to us, so how do we know it appeals to them? Well, run it up the flagpole and see if it flies. Make some, put them in the cooler, reach out to the cheer squad, to the dance team, National Honor Society students, some group at the school, and say, hey, would you be interested in something like this? Would you be interested in swinging by? And I would give you some to wear and see how you like it before prom. Not only do you get a product tester. Would you lower that a little bit when you're, yes. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Not only would you get a product tester, but you would also get the opportunity for some advertising for people to show and see what it is that was being created. So I put glue on the back of each of the Gerberas, touched it to those two spirals, because glue sticks best to glue, or my fingers, apparently. And then as soon as it gets a little bit tacky, then I'll add those on and then just put a little bit of that moss on the back and that's gonna conceal my mechanics, plus give more stability because the moss will be on one side, the flower will be on the other and the wire's in the middle and the glue has permeated between the spirals on the wire. So it's just gonna help hold everything in there kind of securely. So I'll pull off a couple little bits of the moss. Michelle, would you possibly mm -hmm. spray the back of those with a um, like pedal proofer or anything just to keep the pedals on? You sure could. Uh, we were doing an experiment yesterday and I had just Gerber, the red Gerberas, I hacked their heads off, um, glued one to something, uh, pierced through one, and that was an interesting experiment, and then literally saturated the fronts and the backs with crowning glory and then walked off and left them. And they looked pretty darn good this morning when we came in after being out of the cooler for close to 36 hours and uh, no, no refrigeration, no nothing, just that crown and glory on there. So I'm putting a little bit of pressure on the center. I'm not, I'm not squeezing it really hard, but I'm putting a little bit of pressure so that it tacks that moss onto the back. And then I'll do the same on this one. Got a little more glue on him because he's staying put. Get back here. And that will just conceal my mechanics. You could also do a little bit of leaf, uh, a little bit of ribbon, doesn't matter. I personally, I just like the moss. We live in the Pacific Northwest and everything has moss on it around here. So for me, it's just, just in my toolbox all the time. All right, so now that that's stuck to my finger also, are there flowers that you might have to be more careful about having a skin reaction than 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 normal? Flowers? Anything that yeah you might be using on for the moss or anything like that. Um, you know the moss. I've played with it a lot with uh, with contact to skin and haven't had an issue. Um, you know. I suppose at any point anybody can have a reaction. Alstroemeria is one that if people have a reaction, that tends to be it. Having said that, it's typically to the sap, it's to the, the liquid coming out of the stems. And by the time the consumer gets this, the, the customer, hopefully it's not oozing anything at that point. So it should be fine, but you know, um, it, it, it's always a, a possibility at that point for sure. All right, so now I have these two on a neck wire and it kind of has a little bit of an eyeball effect, doesn't it? So I'm not really keen on that. So here's how I'm gonna fix that. I'm going to come in and line it up as it would hang. Actually, I can just put it on the neck form for a second and detach some of those petals. And that will give me kind of a deconstructed Make sure my clasp is working back here. A little deconstruction on my Gerbera daisy, and I can also adjust the angle at which they hang. So if I come in and pull just half of the petals off on each one, and I know I hear some of you screaming, what are you doing? But trust me, it's gonna look cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want that one. Okay, you can have it. Oopsie, got a little aggressive. Pulled, pulled the whole daisy right off there. All right, got a little more 
curvature in that wire. So now I have something a little more artistic looking. <laughs> kind of fun, huh? So if you had this displayed in your cooler, you could even do it with silk flowers. So you could do it in advance and just have it in there as a as an option, you know, demonstrating what you could do. But that to wear in conjunction with the bouquet to carry, now she has a whole ensemble of things for prom that when this is on the table, she still is dressed. She still has some flirty, fun flowers to play with. So I'm gonna move these out of the way. I'm gonna show while you do that, it yeah. looks like, so Kim, the one um, with the niece and the prom and the lights and the bouquet. Yes. Um, they're from Medford, New Jersey. Okay. And it sounds like uh, Drake's friend in Idaho is doing little fairy lights in the corsages. Okay, and fun. Then, yeah, and then uh, Drake is from Salt Lake. Uh, yep. And uh, he's getting a lot of requests for uh, magnet boutonnieres. Yes, magnets are, are very popular. Um, it's a nice alternative to um, working with a glue dash or a glue strip. I still like my glue strips, provided I can get them. So far, I haven't had an issue with that. I like them because, to me, they feel more secure. But depending on what you're doing, the little magnet uh, is fantastic. Um, it probably takes less explanation for some people as to how it goes on. And um, if you happen to have two activities in a weekend that you need the flowers for, it's also very easy to transfer it from one garment or something to another. So cool on the magnets. So the next item is um, another thing I was noticing is unisex type of floral adornments, things that were pretty gender neutral. Um, I was noticing guys with uh, elaborate boutonnieres and girls in pantsuits didn't see as much of it this year as I have in previous years, uh, but definitely different designs that can kind of cross the lines as to what somebody might like to wear. So I designed this woven cuff. It's lily grass. And I wanted to embellish it with just a few simple bits of flowers because really the cuff itself is the, is the design. So I want to make sure I'm taking some of the some of the starch out of my lily grass here because I want to be able to weave it a little bit more through what I have there and add some additional embellishments to it. So I'm just going to take advantage of the different layers of weaving that I have, hopefully. Well, it worked earlier when I did it, but apparently I didn't, there we go, didn't have as chubby a piece of lily grass. So I'm just going to loop this through in a couple different places, just to give it a little more rhythm. And maybe tuck this back through here, like so. There it looks like a dynamic line to me. You guessed your Chester, it can't get much more dynamic than that. <laughs> And if you're in advanced, you know what dynamic line is because we talk about it. All right, so I'm going to trim that end up a little bit there. Michelle, I would yes. just wear it like that. I know. Isn't it, to me, that's, that's just... Fine. That is just and absolutely. we're done. So to that end, maybe if a guy wanted something more like a, a wrist cuff to wear, this would be fine. So cool. Just interesting, unique, but not overdone. And this could also be the base going forward to add a little bit of floral to it. And by a little bit of floral, I have a couple miniature zimbidiums, excuse me, miniature phalaenopsis orchids mm -hmm. over here in a soft, soft, soft yellow green with just a kiss of pink in the center and a little bit of gold on the throat. They're just adorbs, just adorbs. And I think Marisa picked these out the other day for some project she had. And I'm going to take a little bit of that Oasis floral adhesive and tuck that on the back. Let that set for a second. And then maybe a little bit of that moss again 
Although I kind of like the white, this one. Just a little touch of that in there. Michelle, question over here. Sure. Jessica wants to know if there's any specific leaves to use on boutonnieres and corsages. Specific leaves to use on boutonnieres and corsages. Not really. Um, depends on the construction as to what type of boutonniere or corsage you're working with. I can say a definite no are rose leaves because they are not sturdy enough. They are going to um, dehydrate and curl up and just look gnarly in a very, very, very short period of time and not gnarly in a good way. Um, so sturdier leaves, hardier leaves, uh, something like leather or, or leather, there you go, uh, salal is what I'm trying to spit out, or um, what's the one we love, Marisa, your favorite variegated, Pittosporum. Oh, Pittosporum would be gorgeous. Um, Italian ruscus Italian leaves, Israeli ruscus leaves would be gorgeous. Seated eucalyptus. Yeah, anything that's really got some extra tooth to it, I think would be a better choice. Uh, and again, it depends on whether you're using it to add in and embellish something, or if it's the mechanic, if you're using it as the backing or the, the base of your design as well. So I have some sweet little, speaking of foliage, variegated um, oregonia here variegated boxwood called Oregonia. And I'm going to put a little bit of Oasis adhesive on there and tuck this in for just a little, 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 little something, a little extra. Michelle, we're getting uh, a comment here. Okay. Um, and I hope I'm not jumping too forward on probably what you're gonna eventually say, but um, they're wanting to know how you did that treatment on the cuff. Is there going to be any type of tutorial or anything? Whoa! <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. <laughs> yes, as a matter of fact. So uh, if you've ever heard the expression, it was ex as exciting as watching paint dry. Had you watched me create the cuff, you would have dozed off and I'd have lost you. So for your viewing enjoyment, tomorrow, uh, no, today's Wednesday, Friday, uh, Friday, I have a tutorial, step-by-step -step slideshow coming out that shows you how I created a companion boutonniere to go with this. Um, it's obviously not a cuff, but the mechanic, the technique that I use to create the, um, hang on, stretch, that I use to create the weave on the cuff here is exactly the same and that will uh, be on the website on friday so you can see woo lots of glue you can see exactly what i did to create that and i'm just going to tuck for a little extra because you know more is more is better right going to tuck just a couple petals not flowers not the whole floret just a couple petals off that delphinium into here for just a kiss of blue. Mm. Mm -mm. Just a kissy kissy of blue. Mm. Tucked right up in there. I need something sharp and pointy that will have to work. There we go. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do to it. Super simple. I want people to be able to see the basket weave texture that's there. Um, it is built on Oasis one inch aluminum wire. So it's very customizable, very malleable, easy to adjust for any wrist size. Additionally, if you wanted Wonder Woman cuffs and you wanted a pair of these, how awesome would that be? And you could do them double width. So you could make them half again as wide if you wanted a really wide dramatic cuff. Now, as soon as that glue sets, I will be saturating this with Crown and Glory. I did not saturate the base before I started because I wanted to make sure that the um, lily grass wasn't so slick and potentially waxy or oily that I couldn't get my Oasis adhesive to cure properly. But now that everything's on there, as soon as that glue dries, I will hit that with Crown, let that dry completely, and then it'll go in the flower cooler. I have a question. Sure kind of a comment it's sort of off topic but not really but not really okay because right? it kind of 
is piggybacking off the live stream last week. And can you bring that cuff back up real quick? And can you do a close up on it? Sure, right. I can and I can. So, question. Mm -hmm. I know that probably took some time. However, if you were to do that for the PFDE test, uh -huh. would that pass? <laughs> right? As a certified evaluator judge for American Institute of Floral Designers, if I saw this on your table after I got done going, oh, yeah, they watched, I would, yeah, this would pass. It shows advanced creative technique. Um, my mechanics are tidy, if I do say so myself. It has a very defined focal. I have rhythm. I have an asymmetrical balance. And I have advanced techniques with... Uh, the detaching, deconstructing of that um, delphinium floret. So yeah, I, I would pass it. In my world, all it needs is a, some bling, but I'm not gonna put bling on this because it's really not a bling type cuff. But yeah, great, great question, Marisa, it, it would. In my book, it would definitely pass. Oh yeah, that would be like way like five plus 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 plus. Yeah, it's like where's the six? How come I can't give this a six? So <laughs> infinity, infinity and beyond. Um, Karen has a question about the the little florets there. Um, mm -hmm. Karen's wanting to know if individual petals last um, as well as the whole flower. If yes and no. If the flower is well hydrated when you start and the florets are in good shape then um, yes, you shouldn't have an issue. Um, I used dark blue delphinium petals on the um, modern prom wearable that comes out on Friday in the tutorial, the slideshow, and they did just fine until I left them out of the cooler when we were done, you know, a day and a half later, just left it out of the cooler, and then they dried up. They didn't look disgusting, they just kind of dehydrated. So it was actually kind of a cool keepsake at that point. Um, you could always go with a different flower as well. You wouldn't have to do delphinium. Um, you could do, um, well, hello, blue hyacinth. You could work with hyacinth and you could use either a whole hyacinth or trim it down. You could work with orchid petals. Um, you could work with hypericum berries or seeded eucalyptus. It wouldn't necessarily have to be the petals. Remember people, we have spray paint at our disposal. We can change the color of things. I'm sorry. We can color shift our flowers by airbrushing them. <laughs> That's what I meant to say. Oh, and speaking of, hold that thought. <laughs> As I say, oh, yeah, I'm, like, I'm like, Michelle, hurry, because you still have that really cool. I know, I just looked at the corner. Ah, ah, I gotta go faster. Shirley was speaking what's on all of our minds, I think, when she said, no bling, question mark? It's been 53 <laughs> minutes in a Michelle live stream. I've seen Drake, that. Drake, are you paying attention? Drake, Drake, Drake. Up, Drake. Drake. <laughs> all right, so quickly, we talk a lot about, you know, getting great product in and product is awesome. Um, miniature anthuriums, right? Uh, you can probably see they've got some boo-boos. They're beat up, they've had a better day. Can't really use those. Oh, but I can because I can spray paint them. And one of the trends that I saw was sparkle, 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 sparkle. And I wanted something that would be unisex as well as decorative and sparkly and all that good stuff. So I've got some fun Harlequin patterned ribbon here. I'm gonna flatten out the wire because I need it to, to bend to my will at this moment. And I have some red satin ribbon. And with that sparkle, those rhinestone straps or rhinestone shoes or trim and so forth, um, was just really seeing lots of different ways that they were incorporating the rhinestones. Belts, um, embellishments, gloves. Think Madonna lace gloves. Some are fingerless, some are not. That's your 80s retro throwback. But most of those dresses were very, very bold, very, very bold forms on the dresses. Uh, lots of cutouts, lots of things like that. So I just wanted something that was a little, maybe a little over the top, maybe a little unique for the person who's like, yeah, I don't want what everybody else has. I need something that's different, a little extra, if you will. So I just, you saw what I did, I just chunked off some of that ribbon, it's all number nine. I would have liked to have something that was a little bit narrower, um, but I wasn't finding the colors or the, the textures that I wanted. 
And then all I'm doing is taking another ribbon, which is a black and white check, lots of pattern here going on, and I'm just tying it in the center and then coming back and tying it in a knot. It's not a super tight knot. I don't really need it to be monstrously tight. I just need it to hold my materials together. And I'll get a little extra out of the way for the moment. <clears throat> so this is definitely one that isn't for the person hiding in the corner. And it's also a great technique for fixing some damage in flowers, should you have any. And then I'm going to come in and layer cut my different ribbons here so that on the top and the bottom, the different colors are exposed. I'm trying not to cut my finger as I do this because these are very sharp titanium scissors. <laughs> there we go. I actually keep these hidden in the classroom so nobody can find them. Yeah, I'm like, I've never seen those. I haven't seen them. Where are those? Me no tell. <laughs> I know, if I would have found those, I would have been like, ooh, and no. then I probably would have hit those. Yeah, exactly. So, so no one else can find them. So as you look from the side, you can see I've just taken loops of ribbon. Honestly, it could be those bolt ends, those scraps. And then I have taken um, a contrasting or a coordinating ribbon and just tied around it. Then my attachment to put this on either as a dress embellishment on one of those over the shoulder or one of those rhinestone straps uh, as a boutonniere or as a cuff is a U-glue strip and I'm just going to lay that onto the ribbon on the back and then I'm not at this point going to take this off right now because that's what I would peel off and use to attach so I need to leave that as it is but I was working with these that weren't perfect and I got the wire in, but I didn't get the bling in yet. Woo! <laughs> so what I did was I used painter's tape, taped off half of the anthurium, sprayed it with silver because silver is an excellent primer coat, base coat, and then I hit it with glossy black paint, just glossy black paint and then went back in with um, adhesive backed rhinestones and added a little detail across the corner and then an accent one down here in the corner. And then you could do this with a Sharpie, although it didn't have the same gloss. I just spray painted into the garbage can liner and took my finger and then rubbed it on the, the veins, the, um, the textured, the up portion, the mountain, if you will, of the face of the anthurium. So it picks up that detail i don't know if you can see that parker yes I where i've can. got it just kind of brushed Ooh, on those yeah. lines so now what i'm going to do is cut that stem off flush and use a u-glue dash and i'm going to attach this flower to my ribbon drake fell off his chair <laughs> <laughs> Drake, what would you call this? I know what I called it. Really quick, I missed a question from Elaine earlier. If you're going to be working with flowers like this, is there a benefit from having them in a hydration chamber before you work with them at all? Or is it really only helpful at the end? Helpful at the end. Yeah, the hydration chamber would be great at the end. You could do it on the front end, but so long as your flowers were adequately hydrated just in your cooler situation, you would be fine. I'm trying to get this pulled off and it's sticking to me. All right, so off comes the glue dash paper. Maybe, wait for it, wait for it. Oh, no, now I'm picking off my rhinestones. There we go. Oh, it was my extra one. We'll get him tucked back on there. All right. Well, good night. You just have one of those days. I'm having one of those days with my glue right now. Well, Karen answered the question faster than Drake did. She said, Cruella Crissage. There you go. There you go. Cruella Crissage or uh, 101 something. Yeah, absolutely. We love it. Fantastic. Oh, oh, here. Oh, I like this one. What about this? Reminds uh, Nicole of the Queen of Hearts from Alice in Wonderland. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you know what? I had a heart-edged ribbon that I could have used in red. Would have been better uh, for Valentine's Day. But this 
technique would give you a fabulous boutonniere. It would give you a fabulous dress adornment, if I had a strapless dress or a, a spaghetti strap dress to add that on. And then also just working with something like the metal cuff that I would normally work with, or even a stretchy elastic bracelet uh, or a ribbon, I could easily bend and conform this to um, a wrist cuff as well. So there you have it. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful prom season. I'm dying to see what you come up with in um, the Tulip People. Make sure to post your pictures as you get your prom bar set up. Um, I'm gonna start a thread for bling bars. So we have one place where we can post our uh, bling bar setups and then we'll set another thread up where you can post some of your signature creations and um, yeah, Drake, you can steal this one. I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. So if you've enjoyed today, please give it a thumbs up. Please like it. Please share it. Um, if you're on YouTube, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, because then you get the notification when we upload any new content. So have a wonderful rest of your week. And I look forward to seeing you next time when we all get together and do something we love. Bye.